Ja hallgamma lak. Hallgamma lak. Ja hallgamma lak. Ja mig. Ja kis. Ja hallgamma dal. Ma kärri en tios. Ja hallgamma donai. Ja hallgamma Elohim. Kurios tios panta kreito. Kurios tios pestos. Elda ab Jehova, jel imuna Jehova. Ivas lian kurios, otios, opente kreita. Bas lias bas lian, kai kurios, kurio. Jehova da bar halal, Elohim da bar halal. Jehova Elohim, Gadol, Gadol, Geburra, El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos, Ton Christon, Isun Ton Kurion, Kurion, Nimahagion, Pente Kreta, Gadol, Gadol, Geburra, Ehova Ishmael Kam, Ehova Shamma, Yelmakum Yehova, El nakum yapa. Natsak Israel la shaker. Gava gava. Triembos Yehova. Isus Christos panta greta. Gadol gadol gebubu. Mora rosh nasa. Elohim Elohim. Ille ilaye shalut. Yehova mulak. Jehova Malak, Olam, Olam, Ad. Jehova Elohenu, Jehova Ekat, Gadol, Gadol, Geburra. Zaan Logan, Ogar, Tautios, Dulas, Desmios, Despotes. Dikae Sune, and Jesus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion. Hagio, Hagio. Numa, Panta Greta, Gadol, Gadol, Gabriel. Moraros Nasa, Elohim, Elohim. Eleila Eshalot, Jesus Christos, Gadol, Gadol, Gabriel. Jehova, Ihe Elohim. Jehova, Ihe, Elohim. Jehova, Jehova, El, Jehova. Jehova, Rakum, Shen. Jehova, El, Arak, Ape. Rab, Keset, Emet. Jehova, Mine, Mine, Tikel, O Farsen. Derek, Emen, Abakar, Meshvat. Shava. Tamega logai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them, who love to walk breath by breath, 
in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing sufficiency is the evil for that particular day. And yet, Lord God the Father teaches for us, you have the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit so that you can reign in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and overcome that evil or molested by the evil. In Matthew 6 in verse 34 he said, Take therefore no thought for the tomorrow. For the tomorrow shall take the thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. That meant to say kakia. And this word kakia, oh dear brethren, it represents the point to teach that enough of the distorted thinking is been surrounded in the world. And this distorted thinking is all the time goes on to put your thought process to be seized from the Aleph energy which has been given for you. That means the power, the sources. We have the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. This evil says you have not the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So this is what the word kakya is all about. It drains out. Because you go with unconfessed sins in your life. The matter of real genuine Christianity, what we can look in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 16. Not only the divine real, in fact, in the, in the realm of proving our real genuine Christianity as a proof in the workplace where we serve. Up to what extent we are prompt, up to what extent we are far away from murmuring. Because we were slaves, he said, in the time of Egypt. So now we also should deal kindly with the slaves. And then now when you are serving, you serve them with all of the spirit, with all of the heart, with all of the mind, with all of the soul. So proving your infidelity, Satan goes to introduce kakia in your mind. So sufficient is the evil you have for that particular day. And that's how Satan makes you all to suffer by not making you to confess your sins. By not making you all to get back into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And showing you sin rather than grace. The grace is Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what we have in the fellowship. To learn the Lord's mind, the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Like a prodigal son, when he will come back, the father is waiting, the forgiving father. So the forgiving Father in heaven of us also looks back when we shall come back so that he can once again give us our power to reign and to trample down Satan under our feet and prove that Lord God is all the time true and correct in his decisions. So Satan blinds up your mind not to look upon the truth by going to be unconfessed sins. But whereas Christ, O Lord of God, calls, prove your genuinity by confessing your sins and getting back into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and reigning in Him. So, dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. And let's come back and continue what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date of eternity past, to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall continue after this prayer.
Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pearly wonders of the, of the Lord's mind. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming into the marvelous grace of the Lord to learn thy truth. Father, we have nothing on this earth, O Lord, to cherish and nourish apart from your mind. Thus, the great mind of yours, O Lord, is our life, is our breath. You have given us this teaching to understand what the true life is besides the molestation of the spirits which goes on to put burden and make lives to be really absolutely shipwrecked but you are lord the one who makes the paths clear through the power of flood cut the holy spirit controlling us through your mind and telling that nothing is impossible with your remote declaration of bible doctrine and strengthening back us again to do your work. You have said the Lord, return, O oh, you backslider. And you're going to strengthen them back when they know the real resources and the power of great one which you have taught a lesson through Elijah in first in first Kings chapter eighteen. In chapter nineteen, emphasizing the still small voice, call the Mama Daka. What a great opportunity we have, O oh Lord, over here to serve you in the power of the Spirit and in the completed counsel of your mind. And yet, O oh Lord, much of the people in the present Christendom are walking contrary to your truth. Help us, O oh Lord, to understand your mind as we study them. The things which you, thou hast prepared and kept for us, on today's date of eternity past, though we don't deserve anything, O Lord, your grace has kept us alive to understand and to realize the burden which you have kept before us to carry this goal of yours. Realizing that the earth and excellent the earth should be filled by your glory and excellency. Letting go all things behind, O Lord, looking forward to the race that has been kept before us. Help us to serve you in a better quality of kindly cases. Wherever you can be pleased by our ministry. So Father, the things which Thou hast prepared and kept for us on today's state of eternity past as we study them, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask so in Lord. Amen. Evil if you can look in Luke chapter 6, in verse number 18, the people who were vexed with the evil, he said, with unclean spirits, they were healed. The word over here for vexed is called to be okleo. And this okleo meant to say molested. And here, dear brethren, we have many important lessons to learn because this has been taken as a throng or a crowd or a multitude of the people who have been to opposition for the rulers and leading men. These are like this ignorant multitude who have been gathered and they don't have proper order. So here, dear brethren, if we can look upon this word oclaws, it goes to define, first of all, these people will be having expression of joy in their body because of the blood. Therefore, you have to understand several times repeated warnings for us in the Old Testament. You shall not eat the blood but rather it shall pour it down. And maybe today people are researching out the way the blood is going to lead you. If you drink or eat, the blood is going to lead you many sicknesses in your bodies. But in spite of that, we know the redemption, the salvation, so that the Lamb of the Lord of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Comparing that in relationship with anthropomorphism taken by the terms of anthropopathism between father and the son. The Lamb of the Lord of a God called as that 
reality to understand. A lamb without any spot. Comparing that to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, teaching that you all the relationship between Father and the Son after your sacrifice that meant to say you have been atoned with the Lord by believing in Christ. Now your relationship starts as a father and a son relationship. It's not that the passage of Ezekiel 18 where many people thinketh the sin of the father is not been pacified by the son, neither the son because he goes to begin from Achan of the book of Joshua where multitude because of one small sin made by this person the whole congregation was being punished. From there on, if you can look in Ezekiel chapter 18, he comes to the individual responsibility of relationship with God. So now people may think, father's sin cannot be atoned by the son, and son cannot attain the sin of the father, and many critics would love to discourse these things, and they would say, emphasizing the point, how could son die for the sin of the entire world? You know, they don't understand the concept. The Lamb of the Lord of a God. Behold the Lamb of the Lord of a God, which taketh away the sin of the world. That meant to say what is being compared as the beast, which taketh away the sin of the entire world. That's what the same thing, what has taught them right from the beginning, the Levitical offerings, or 1,500 years of perfect practice they had. And when you find this word in this Gospel of John, when he says in chapter number one, he said, Lamb of God, which is very, very essential for us. He said, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the entire world. And today many people don't understand about this. In John chapter 1, in verse number 29, if you can look, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And yet if you can understand when he's comparing that to be the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, he's teaching to us in very, very simple terms the thoughts right from the beginning, which he has said that, he is the one who is going to shed the blood for us. So here, dear brethren, you need to look. We need to understand the terms which has been so clearly given, even in Isaiah chapter 53, he said, He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by the knowledge. By his knowledge shall my righteous servants justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. And he says over here in the same chapter of Isaiah 53, which we need to take, he said that he was dumb. And as he was being taken for the sacrifice of us, he kept quiet. So you find over here emphasizing the words in Isaiah chapter 53, saying that in Verse number five, he says, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we have been healed. And then he said, We all like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us. And then he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. You know, the same blame is expressed over here long back. Don't think that in relationship between father and the son. Father and the son relationship comes for us as a pattern to understand how we have to approach the Lord of a God. That means as a man who has been sent to his work, that meant to say what every believer, for example, if you can take from Genesis chapter 1, when man is made in the image of Lord God, he has placed him with the work. Till the rain could come, there was no proper herb except, the, the, except that humidity, the moist, which went along to give some water. Then afterwards, Lord God makes the mechanics of Genesis 2-7, making man. 
out of the dust. And then he goes on to breathe in his nostrils the breath of life. That's a different procedure over there. But if you can look over here, emphasizing the point, man should be very faithful for his calling in the Lord. Very faithful in everything what he has been called. And people don't understand about these things. Therefore, Lord God, when he has sent his son, he's addressing him as my beloved son, the only eligible one to go to the cross who has fulfilled all my requirements and he has executed all my desires. Therefore, the word Mone Gine, the only eligible one to go because in him there is no all sin nature. And he compares over in verse 7 of Isaiah 53, stating that he is bought as a lamb to the slaughter. You people may not understand this. First comes as a lamb, as a sacrifice. And then he goes on to teach the relationship after your sin has been atoned. John 16, 8 through 11. What sin? You haven't believed in Christ, therefore now you have believed in Christ. Now you are entering up into a relationship. You are not any longer like a living beast or an animal. But what you are now, you are now the quickening spirit. Therefore you cry out with the spirit given for you as Abba Father. That's what he says in Romans chapter 8. The spirit of the Lord of God, wherewith it helpeth you to call now God the Father as Abba Father. Now you enter up into relationship, but before entering that, what you are, you are sin. It has to be atoned. And there can be no excuse for it. Any other step, any other procedure apart from learning and knowing the word of Lord God is not possible for you all to take it. Because much of the people today, they have failed to know the inculcations or the importance of the Lord's mind. Much of the people, not just few, but all. Therefore, they read half. They don't understand full. Because Bible doctrine, first of all, is a spiritual phenomenon. And such critics will love to find faults in the Bible without having thorough understanding in the spiritual realm of the Word of God. They love to look at Ezekiel chapter 18 and they would say, see now, father is not able to justify the sin of the son, neither son or vice versa. Then how you think son died for the whole world? It is not the son who died as a lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the entire world. He died and now he is giving you a better position, a better place, a new position in Christ. A new relationship with Christ. A position where you can call Abba Father. Now he calls you to learn. Adam was not there. So he goes on to say the lesson through Adam. How it was to be. I intended him to be such a faithful one to me. But he has been deceived. Satan deceived Eve. Now Eve, or Satan beguiled Eve, now Eve goes on to expose the beauty of her and make Adam to be deceived. And since Adam was a man who has to be in charge, he has fallen for the sin. So you need to look over here, very, very important terms of the Bible. If you understand that, you could really realize many great things, what has been given for us in the word of Lord God. So from the first Adam, and then afterwards he goes on to call the people to walk with the Lord God, like Enoch walked, Noah obeyed, that you can find not so perfect. Enoch walked with the Lord God, so he took him off, and afterwards you find Noah, the preacher of righteousness. After Noah, you can look at Abraham. He said, walk before me and be perfect. At the age of 99, he's going to give him that wisdom. He touched him in the chapter of 22 of Genesis, telling to him, now I know there is nothing between you and me. You obey the word of Lord God accurately. You follow the word of Lord God. And then look further. 
He teaches that he can find the people of Israelites to be faithful to the Lord. The Numbers chapter 1 records according to the genealogical records of the 12 tribes who are eligible to go to the war. In this tribe so many people, in that tribe so many people. I think Judah exceeded them all by having 75,000 men or 70,000 odd men. Tribe of Asher, 41,000 odd men, 41,500 men. Like that they were, but they have fallen for sin. They made up idols. And then afterwards he goes to plead with them. But they never thought of believing the words. They never thought of understanding the Lord's mind. Though he pleaded them, they did not even recognize to care for his pleading. He sends his prophets. That's what we find the sermon in Matthew 23, verse 37 and 38. The heeding which went, the instruction which has to be headed at, has went unheeded. They did not heed it. They left it. It went absolutely vanity. They did not come back. How many times I have to take you back, says the word of Lord God. But they did not. They did not get it. They did not do it. They did not understand it. And you can realize how much they have left. So dear brethren, if you can look, how much of your time you're spending over here on this earth without making up to be faithful children of God? And then he maketh his son to come and he shows now in 1 John 2, 6, we need to walk like the way how Christ our Lord our God has walked in relationship crying out in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit as Abba Father. People don't understand this concept because first of all they don't even realize what is the Lamb of God said in John 1 29 in comparison with Isaiah 53 7. They don't realize it. They don't understand it. They don't go to look upon it. Simply they may take a passage from Ezekiel 18 and then very clearly he says about individual relationship with Lord God. The same thing he taught in Ezekiel 14, 14. Noah, Daniel, and Job, though these three men be there, yet by their own righteousness they can be saved by themselves, but they cannot save the children or the wife. The same thing what is said in Ezekiel 18, 4, or verse number 20, the same thing. If anyone fails to do to obey my laws, he will die in his own sin. That means not like Achan, one man sin, the entire Israelites failed. That's the procedure over there which explains in Ezekiel chapter 18. And he said, your teeth has eaten the fruit, our our, our te uh, you, you, you have tasted the fruit and our teeth are still paining. The parable will go now. What you eat, you are going to face it. The same thing he teaches. Because now he enters you into something of a great relationship whereby... You cried now in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as our Father. He pleaded them, the people of Israelites were pleaded a lot. And he goes to introduce some of the Gentile nations as well, like the Moabites of Ruth. You can understand Tamer. You can realize the things pertaining to Rahab and all these people have been given the Uriah that he taught. He says, even the sons of Rechabites, you look how faithful they were. He goes to warn these people of Israelites to say that. Be faithful when you look upon that lesson of Jeremiah 35. You can understand the Rechabites, how he has told them, how faithful they are to the Lord, to their master, to their father. But what are you doing? He claims the question for them. How faithful you are. And he claims a question. How can't you be faithful to my word? And ultimately he decides to send his son. The fulfillment of the prophecy of Genesis 3. We are not talking in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 7. We are not talking. We are talking Genesis 3. Long back the first prophecy about 
the seed of a woman. That means coming in the form of this human nature. And he comes to destroy and trample out Satan its head completely. The seed of a woman. Now he sends his son, the same thing what he writes in Galatians chapter 4. In the season born. And there you can look. How much important it is for us to realize the relationship between son and the father. And these people don't understand about this concept. They love to talk many stupid things. They say, it's possible. You die for your own sin. So how can I take responsibility for the entire world? It says in chapter 18, it's so misguiding for this man. Because first of all, they're not believers in Christ. They can't understand the spiritual content of that. And second thing, they never have a heart to believe in the Lord. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who alone said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, because He is the only Savior. He redeemed you. He redeemed the entire world. You believe it or not, we have nothing to do with that. Neither we are here to polish you to believe. Neither we are here to ask you to believe. We have nothing to do with that. We are to tell only one thing, what the Bible says, look into it. What the Bible teaches, make into it. We have nothing to do. We have nothing to make up. We have nothing to do. And many people don't even understand. They think we are trying to convert. Who cares to convert? As we read yesterday about the dung and the peace passage, we have nothing to take about Accept the Spirit of God, what it knows about you, you and you, the Spirit knows when you. We have nothing to do with it. It's like the same tongue. What color you have passed through, what smell it comes, it's between you and them. That's it. We have nothing to do with your tongue. We have nothing to do with the urine. That's the same thing. It's between you and Lord God. We have nothing to do with that. It's all in nature activities, what you practice. And we have nothing to do for that. What you do with that is left to you. They've given the information for you to understand. He is the Lamb of the Lord God, where with the blood of Christ cleanseth out from all sins. Even after you believe in Christ, you do sin either by thought, word, or deed. Therefore, we are given the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins. Because that blood of Christ, O Lord of God, cleanseth us out from all sins. So we have nothing to worry or add or look. Or see how these people they're believing, or will they believe it or not, or they take it or not, or accept it. We have nothing to do with that. They are only to give you the information. Because Ezekiel 18 has been wrongly propagated by the men who are not believers in Christ. <laughs> the people who believe in Christ, if they would tell, you can understand. Because even in the people who believe in Christ, it's a demand that you be in the fellowship. The people who really come with the burden of truth to be told, with the bona fide gift of the past teach given, and with the proper preparation, faithful preparation. That caliber of the people, when they come and they preach, there's something superb. There is something as ultimate you can understand about them lie, about their lie. And you can't understand even that either. Because even the pastors, when they're preaching, when they don't have the bona fide gift, they can't understand because they cannot be eliminated by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, controlling them, leading them, and teaching them. They cannot. And therefore, what happens, dear brethren? They cannot even realize what is this concept of the Lord's mind given for us or what is the thinking of the Lord's mind given for us even Christians can't understand therefore they go to sit with the debates with such people and they think they've really been able to do great things to the Lord but in return 
not having a faithful preparation from the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic, or above all, to be in the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit ought to say, the marks upon their body which they have to possess by daily learning Bible doctrine, which they don't have. The preparation marks, for example, spending time kneeling down in the presence of Lord God, the Father, you have marks upon your knees. And that preparation you don't have. You may have a paperweight degree. What's worth for it? Just throw it out. It's just a paperweight. It can provide you food. It cannot provide you that honor which has been coming to be given by the Lord God as a faithful steward when you rightly divide the word of truth. And people want to speak by the paper and not to the proper inculcation, bona fide gift of the pastor teacher. They don't want to speak about those terms. They want to simply enjoy their life by looking upon paperwork. And these people are entering into the pulpits. These are making their lives in the platforms. And they would say, we will go to defend, we will go to debate, we will do this, we will do that. And what happens? He'll be chopped off. Because the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you know, the greater to, to tell a simple example, the more closer you are, with the person, the greater secrets of him, you know it. That's what he said in Amos, in very simple terms. The prophets, they know, because I tell them the things which I am going to do. That means they know. The same thing between a wife and a husband, or a soulmate, if you can look. The greater they're close to each other, they know even the even minute pin of a detail. If for a stranger you would love to tell, you would say, no, we will not tell to a stranger our things. So here, day by day demands your preparation. Day by day in coming in search of truth. Day by day learning and knowing the present problems which are pricking your heart, being waxed by the unclean spirits. Unclean spirits wax you and gets you into sicknesses. But you're not looking upon the spiritual sicknesses because greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. And if you go to be controlling under the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, He guides you ample of truth. But you're not looking upon the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, guiding you in the ample of truth. But the unclean spirits, if you can look, unclean spirits. They're troubling you, isn't it? They're vexing you, isn't it? They become like a burden, but you don't have a burden of knowing how the name of my Lord God has been blasphemed on this earth by so-called fakery of pastors, by so-called fakery of the critics, by so-called fakery who go on to say that they're going to look in apologetic terms to defend Christianity since they haven't had the bona fide gift of the pastor-teacher, since they haven't had that communion relationship with Lord God, the Father in heaven, through the Holy Spirit of the Lord God, to know his heart, to learn about him, to have the deep things being told by his teaching for us. You don't have that relationship, and you expect to come and teach. Until Lord God the Father goes to eliminate. That's what we read in Isaiah 63 in 64 in verse number 4. Since the beginning of the world, he said, No ear has heard, no eye has seen the things which they have been prepared and kept, that they wait upon the Lord. That means what? Disciple-oriented life. You come to look, you're not satisfied with these things. You want every day to know the word of Lord God. As a baby craves for the food, so now you crave for the spiritual food. And they would say, Lord, I don't have any desire in anything else on this earth apart from your word. Because your word teaches how much better it is to get wisdom than gold. How much better it is to get understanding than choice silver. So Lord, I love to look into your words because the path of a righteous one is highway of holiness. He departs from evil. Therefore, he goes to protect his soul and absolutely his life has been preserved. 
or the ways of his life have been preserved. So Lord, I don't have any desire in the things of this world. I want nothing but Bible doctrine to be number one priority for me. I have nothing but the word of Lord God for me to be my number one priority. Lord, so teach me that truth. When you have that zeal, God the Father doesn't come so easily. Dear brethren, just don't think. You can read some things and you can go to explain. You can look into this author viewpoint and that author viewpoint and you can come and talk. Not at all possible. The life of Moses until he looks into that burning bush and sees why it has not been consumed, he hasn't been called. Likewise, after believing in Christ, though you have been given the bona fide gift at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, when you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, yet that function of the Spirit or the function of the gift of the pastor teacher doesn't come to operate until you have been faithfully prepared. And that takes time. Christ, our oh Lord, our God, 20 years and then afterwards, 40 days of his journey through fasting. His time was short, his plan was short. As a human being, it's a great privilege to come to serve the Lord in this flesh. You should be very thankful to the Lord that he has chosen you to be born and to be made as a as a human being, our anthropos, and to come right now in this church age. The age, what we are going through, as he said in John chapter 17, in verse number 18, as you have sent me, O Lord, I am also sending them into the world. And he teaches us to teach the Lord's mind. And we should be so much thankful to Christ. Because in this church age, what we are going through with all great privileges given for us, this great privileges, what we are going through, what we are enjoying, what we are having is absolutely brilliant. You really can't understand the privilege what we are having today in this church age. Such a great privilege what we are having today in this church age, you can't understand that. You still don't know the power of your flesh, what God the Father has given you. Your presence on this earth as Christ, O Lord of God, walked. As Christ, O Lord of God, lived and set forth a pattern, a role model, saying that I have been born to witness the truth, the life what he has lived. The same pattern he says for you as well. If you're having the bona fide gift, get your preparation done. I will look into the other things of your life because you are my bond slave. Master cares for the bond slave. Bond slave doesn't go to have the time to work for his survival. The master looks, master provides. He provided in the past through this ravenous nature birds. Do not think now he's going to provide. The master provided through the widow. The Zarephath of that place widow. She gives. And you need to understand, if you have really been sent by the Lord God, how much is going to provide you, how much is going to shelter you out in the terms and conditions of Christ. You have not been faithfully prepared. You haven't invested your time there. <laughs> Therefore you express unbelief. You don't believe in the promises, the great things of Lord God which has given for us. And though Christ the Lord of God said, I've, as I have sent, I am sending them to the world. You people don't even realize that this caliber of the people of Ephesians 1, 4 through 6, before the foundation of the world, which he has chosen us to be for Christ, or to be holy, to be blameless, to be without spot. And yet, we are ending up our life in vanity on this earth. It's really a great shame to know for us how much we are wasting our valuable grace. It's really pathetic to know. Because though you have been given this human form of flesh to understand the Lord's mind, you people are still spending your time in looking what could be this or how could be that. 
Because first of all, you're not concentrating on the bona fide gift given to you at the moment of salvation. It demands time for you all to learn. Every day. It demands time for your preparation. It demands a temporary sacrifice of your life. Your friends may enjoy the world. You don't have time for it. You have time only to enjoy with Christ. You will say, Lord, nothing is dear to me on this earth apart from your word, apart from your mind. Yeah, give me one more day, O oh Lord, I'm thankful, help me, O oh Lord, to serve you diligently, to search the word of Lord God diligently. Not having any way, any laxity or slackness in me. Not to have any alibis or excuses in me. You have found me, O oh Lord, you have strengthened me with your strength of your power, which is greater in me than anything else could be on the earth. You have given me the dunamis power of the Spirit, you have given me the agape love of the Spirit. You have given me the sophronismos mind of the Spirit. And let her Lord, what is that I need to look on this earth? Just give me a word. Because all the things on this earth, whatsoever we listen or hear or look, are absolutely lies. Because your word alone is true. Therefore, your word is settled in the heaven forever. Your word is a light for me. First, Lord, give me your word. I need to be well prepared in your word. All the things on this world, what the people are going through, are sure out of vanity. At the end, they die in their own sins and in their own lusts. But we are having eternal word of Christ. And yet, dear brethren, many people in the present Christendom are not able to get acquainted with the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher with thorough preparation of the Lord's mind. And they think they can go for debates, they'll be chopped off. Just look, first the procedure is the land. He has been called to be the Lamb of God. Therefore, no value for you to have your blood to enjoy. Now, we may enjoy in your blood, thinking, you know, whenever you have any sicknesses, there is no need for us to explain or ask you. They just go for to ask you anything. They'll first ask you a blood checkup. Oh, you have any diabetic condition? So come, let's look what is happening in your blood. So they want to find out what's wrong with your blood. If the blood is good and perfect, nothing will happen. So they want, to hack, they want to make up your blood to be healthy. So they want to improve the things that are going to be healthy in your blood. But the vexing of your soul, molestation of your soul begins when first you enjoy in your body for the blood which you have in that pumping. And that blood goes on for you to the process of making your life for stupidity to be number one priority. And that blood, it happens. Here Christ, our Lord of God, compared to the Lamb of God, has spread his blood for us so that we can become saved by replacing his substituted spiritual death for us on the cross. Then you can enter with the relationship called to be father and son as crying out Abba Father in the spirit. That relationship which has been called for us to enter in Christ. And that's very, very important. People look at that relationship and they say, how it is, father can die for the son, or son can die for the father, and they love to have every mannerism of chit-chat or we can call worthless debates, wasting the valuable time and the grace of God in vanity, thinking that they're defending the truth. They're not defending the truth. If they would love to defend the truth, let them prepare in the churches for the congregation which cometh. The ultimate problem begins in your life and your thinking is not been renovated as for the terms and conditions of my Christ. The ultimate thing happens only when you have thinking in Christ to be renovated because 
all the things in the world are nothing but lies. That's what you need to look. All the things in this world which are passing through is absolutely lies. whether you believe it or not. And what is the truth? Word of God. Therefore, the first thing what you need to do, you need to learn the Word of Lord God, no matter whatever may be the cost. As long as you fail to learn the Word of Lord God, dear brethren, so long you will be waxed by the unclean spirits because your body goes to have great joy because of the blood which is pumping in you. And that body which has been pumping in your blood or making up the enjoy in the blood will build a wall of fortification for discipleship program. It says no for discipleship program. That's what you're waxed. Why your vexation begins? Because you build up a wall of fortification by saying no to Christ, by saying no to the word of Lord God. That's what your body does when you're getting all the enjoyment. You know, to illustrate this in simple terms, if you can understand. In the time of the past Jews, if you can realize, the betrothal and the marriage would happen when a man would construct his own house. Because after he gets married, he's going to take his bride there. And the Bible says, for one year, let no man disturb him. That's the Old Testament. Because he has been sufficient caliber enough to provide her food, clothing, shelter. With his own hands, he's able to work out. With his own hands, he's able to build a home for his family. And he's not staying with his parents any longer, but he's having his own individual home. And if ever the man is eager enough to get married... That's what Apostle Paul says, even I have the right to get married. Why can't I get married, he says. Because he's a man who's capable, because he's having the vigor and valor to be working and providing and caring and all the things. What all the natural cycle of life has been needed on this earth. But he said, I cannot go for that because I don't have my time to invest there. My time is to please Lord God. I have many things to preach. I have many things to write. I have many things to make up, to stand for the next generations to come in Christ. And he did it. He executed it and he made known for the people to understand that number one priority for him is to serve Christ. And yet he says the same thing in the feet of Gamaliel, what he has learned, we look upon that Talmud or the Mishnah saying that if a man of a Jewish wants to, if wants to marry, he has to have all sufficiency. That meant to say what? Marriage is the greatest happiness what they find. Ecclesiastes 9.9, 9. enjoy the life with the wife of your youth. So what this man does, he has to be a chaste virgin, he has to be a chaste virgin. Not that he's going to get married already in the sense being not a virgin. That's what Christ, the Lord of God, even when he executed the first marriage in the Garden of Eden, both were virgins. Therefore marriage bed shall not be defiled. The husband should be in such an excitement for her so that he can provide her renovation of her thinking through the word of Lord God. They should focus together to worship Lord God. They have to be together in performing the will of Lord God because the goals of the husband should be enhanced by the wife to to support him. That's what the Ezer, Ebnezer, what the people may call the stone of a help. But here the right helpmate is called to be Ezer. And this Ezer is nothing but giving you to be something of a beyond, to help you beyond all the people to make you to worship Christ with having that focus in the Lord. That's what she does. And the purpose of the husband, she accompanies to satisfy the goal of her husband making both focus one. And together they go to do it. So this excitement, what they have, is to really serve Christ. The physical excitement is just what even animals can do because first your soul should match there. So here if you can understand your brother on these things, in simple terms, what he states, this 
Jewish boy who's going to get married, a Jewish man is going to get married, he's first having his own home. And now he has been well stabilized enough as a virgin. Now he's eager enough to get married to his wife, whomsoever they're going to make it up in the sight of the Lord, who will be that Adam's rib for him, what God has designed for her. Having that flux to come out only for her and not for anyone else. So here, dear brethren, in spite of this process, a legalized process, if a man or a boy is able to get his lusts and the desires to be fulfilled in an illegal way without getting married, then will that man be worried to build up a house? Will that man be worried to tame the children? Will the man be worried to take care and provide for the family? Certainly not, because he's been taking up the excitement of the lust of libido. So he doesn't worry now, he doesn't care for it, he doesn't even think for it. He doesn't even go through the procedure what the Bible says, even when if we can look in the book of Exodus, he goes to give some commandments for the couple, how they have to be. They have to build up a house, they have to take care of her, they have to give proper food, proper clothing, proper shelter, all these things, they have to do it. But you can understand they're not able to perform it. So you can realize, dear brethren, how much they are able to suffer. Because they're having excitement in the blood. And they have been building up something which is far away from the legalized procedure as a bride to become a stabilized man. And today people, they're not able to realize what a marriage should be all about. They doesn't even have to properly take care of their family, their parents. They haven't proved that worth towards their brother or sister. And that in the wave of libido, they want to get married. This is what they do. This is what they think. This is what they want. They haven't proved in some things where the family responsibility has to be taken and now they think they are ready for some other family responsibility and they utterly flop. Therefore, the Jewish rule really matters a lot. First, you go and build up your own house. Then you can go to get married. And no one disturbs you for one year as well. But these people, they don't understand this concept. So what are they doing? Enjoying the lust in the wave of the libido. And ultimately what happens? They end up in sin because marriage bed should not be defiled. Anything of your physical sex, if you can include it, requires marriage. Without marriage, if you try to involve in it, it's a sin in the sight of the Lord God. You know, the conditions of the Bible, if they have been well followed in the world, even with the Western culture, many people would have been really proving the high standards of Christianity to the world. The real genuine Christians. That's why we look the difference between the wheat and the tares, the difference between the goat and the sheep, where there will be differentiation. They don't think so easily all Christians can be saved. Therefore, he said, Many are called, few are chosen, even from your minute responsibility to your company, to the major responsibility to your family, Lord God the Father looks into your great genuine accountability for you. That's how you're going to build up your house with gold, silver, precious stones. And not with wooden stuff or stubble, which will be burnt off at the fire of the test, when the house has been constructed, been put, Things which burn out, they vanish off. Things which stay back, they shall remain. And people don't understand about these things. So now this man who is not faithful, 
who has been indulging in such stupid things, or lust, sinful things, he will be waxed by the unclean spirits. That's what I want to tell. First of all, his body is enjoying the blood. Second, it would say, there is no need for me to go to the legal procedure of discipleship program to Christ. There is no need. That's what these people will practice and work. They would look, there is no need. The word over here, what we find for waxed, is called Kali Ero. That meant to say what? They don't make up a wall of fortification for discipleship program. In simple words, there is no need for me to build up a house so that I can get well prepared as a virgin to get married to another virgin. No need have a form of dates or now very stupid sad thing what we can call living relationships you get to spend time with each other for three months and six months and then afterwards you get ready for someone she's going to get ready for someone really dear brother the malignment what they do to the flesh sinning against their own soul because your body is now called to be the temple of the living lord of a god You have to be exposed only to one husband. And these people, they don't understand how much they're grieving or squelching or vexing. Lamarck says he got married to two. People looking upon the Bible, they may say Solomon had thousand, David had seven hundred. But what? They ended up in their great sin. It's really a sin. One man, one woman, that's what Lord God planned. He has only one church, not many churches also. And in this one church, all the universal believers who have been there, sanctified to walk worthy with the Lord in white raiment, they will be there. Because they have proved that walking worthy in Revelation 2 and 3 chapters, what we read. And they stand firm to Christ. They have nothing to look upon to be changed. They are waiting for the things pertaining to Christ to say, come to the right hand, good and faithful stewards. You have been faithful to me. In little matters, I will make you to be faithful in great things. Come over here. Only one church for the third title of my Lord, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Only one. But people won't be happy with one. So they end up. You just look, you have one kid, how much concentration they can give to that kid. Two kids to the max, you can try. If you have hundred kids, how can you concentrate? Then just imagine with your wife, how much she has to be for you as a helpmate. How much you have to involve yourself in the focusing work of Christ. How much you have to be togetherness with her. But since these people they have built up a wall of fortification against the discipleship program of Christ, our Lord, the soul starts to wax. That means without marriage, they're indulging in such illicit relationships. Dating in the name, living relationship in the name. In fact, indeed, the world which is promoting now, like this homosexuality, as good as lesbianism, bestiality also, if needed, they will perform. They're doing it in the past, they will do now also. The homosexuality as well. Just look how much you're defiling yourselves in the world. How much? So dear brethren, how much of your life you're defiling? And then dear brethren, many people are not able to realize that. The defilement, what they're going through on this earth. So he says, waxing begins because your body hasn't built up a wall of fortification to Christ. As discipleship program to the Lord. And it goes to be such an example, dear brethren, you will be associated in that company of the people where you will not even hear the word of discipleship program in your ear. From the rising of the sun till the going of the sun, you people will not even be able to have a ear in your thought to talk about discipleship program to Christ. That's what your third stage of vexation begins. 
the first stage it will be a great joy in your body, in your flesh, in your blood. The second stage, since you are enjoying that flesh, like not having proper requirements being met to get married to a woman, like the Jewish concept, you involve in the in the wave of your libido, in your lust. So you say far away from discipleship program. No fear of the Lord God. You know what, dear brethren, in the midst of such powers and crookedness and generations, he said in Philippians 2, 14 and 15, carry the word of Lord God as the word of life. That meant to say what these people, they don't know what is life. They are more worst than the beasts of the earth. At least a dog will be faithful in that due season until that season can get over to one dog itself. But these people are worse than those dogs. They don't understand the concept of faithfulness. Therefore in Revolution 13.8 if you can look before the foundation of the world itself he has removed out some people from his list because they never believed in the sanctity and the fear of Lord God. They never, they never look upon that. They never understand that. So that's the second stage of your vexation. The third stage, from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, there will be no discipleship program at all for you. You never hear that. You make up your life to be nominal, conventional Christians, weekly Christians, monthly Christians, like the religion crowd coming yearly once to the church, yearly Christians. You know why people are failing? Because you don't have day by day the word of Lord God inculcated to your soul and spirit. Therefore you don't understand the true concept of life in Acts chapter 5 in verse number 20. The angel of the Lord God helps them to tell all the words of this life. Zao, not bios, Zao concept. The life which has been originated from the spirit being well trained by the Holy Spirit of the Lord God. And this human spirit goes to train up your soul to change the facets of your soul from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint. Until then you can't really understand what are the thinking, what are the teachings of Christ. And the people are still staying far away from the truth. <coughs> Dear brethren, how much we have been still staying alive from staying away from the reality. You call that as a reality, but we call as a sin. It's not reality, it's the concept of Satan blinding your minds not to know the sanctity of the law. Because the work of Satan is to see as many as it can take to the lake of fire. That's what Satan does. As many as it can from the lake of fire, Satan wants to take it up. That's what Satan does every time, dear brethren. As much as it can, as many as it can. Therefore it says, so what? If you're not a disciple oriented to Christ, so what? Enjoy your life in the flesh. Vaxation begins. But Christ, the Lord of God, has given daily to come back and live a life in the spirit. The true origin of life, the true category of life which originates from the standards of Zoe concept rather than Bios concept. And if these people are not able to look, what will be that Zoe concept or the Bios concept? Because Bios concept of life, they think it's great. But the Zoe concept of life, it calls for true eternity in the Lord. So we are called over here to understand what is that Zoe concept of life originating from the Spirit. You will have this vexation every day by the unclean spirits. The people whose thinking is not catharsis. The thinking which is not in accord with the word of Lord God. So this catharsis process, what these people they are going through, if you can understand, he would say, they have been trampled out. How will they trample out? 
because dear brethren your every thought in your in your mind is not been able to get up to your thought process in Christ until you get that you can't understand what is that unclean spirit and the true healing for you the word what we can call as ishab is nothing but making up your body to be filled with the word of lord god so that you're going to relaxly dwell with the word of lord god so in luke chapter 16 6 in verse number 18 and they that were waxed with unclean spirits that meant to say what their every thought was not been brought into captivity for christ as per the terms and conditions of the lord's mind this with the unclean spirit so when their every thought has been waxed by the unclean spirits they were healed the solution for it now his body should be involved not just mind his body every thought should be brought into captivity for christ but he would say not just mind every facet the biggest organ the body called to be the skin from the top of the head till to the top of the feet i have nothing but bible then you're relaxed then you can say, if God be for us, who can be against us? With Lord God, we are more than conquerors in everything, because nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is abiding in Christ. That's what your real life begins, dear brother. You can be healed only when you're able to make up, to know your every thought should be disciple-oriented, to learn your every thought to be grammatious program grown up in Christ. Then you will be healed. But prior to that, what are you doing, dear brother? <laughs> You're waxing. Since you wax, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, since you go to grieve, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we have been said in First Thessalonians 5, 19, quench not the Holy Spirit. That is nothing but to be as good as to say, to quench, that means to put off, to extinguish. And what are you going to put off? You are going to put off your grammatious program to the Lord in your body. You are going to put off that. So he said, don't put off that. And there are many people who are quenching Lord God, the Holy Spirit today by not growing up into grammatious program in the body. Therefore, what they are going to do, he said in Ephesians chapter 4, in verse number 30, he said, Grieve not the word lupao. And the meaning of the word lupao is nothing but to be coming as building up a wall of fortification against the renovated thought process in Christ. So he says this word lupao, that is, don't put to grief, don't put to pain, don't put to sorrow, don't put to hardship. That means in your thought process, in your viewpoint of life, don't put pressure, don't try to put pressure upon your body. How can you put pressure upon your body when your body is not having the word of Lord God, when you're building a wall of fortification not to be renovated in Christ? That's when Lupao works in you. Your viewpoint should be all the time for the word of Lord God. If that, if that doesn't happen, if that doesn't happen to learn the word of Lord God or look the will of Lord God, then he would say in simple terms, you are still in the process of lupao. That means you are having pressure upon your body. Therefore what you do, you simply quench out. First Thessalonians 5.19, have your bodies are never grown up into grammatious program of the Lord. You have failed in what etsim Lord God the Father has prepared you. He has prepared you to the viewpoint in spite of any pressure that could come upon your blood. You should be disciple oriented to Christ, but that you are lost there. You haven't been able to do that in the law. You are lost it. And it's a very, very sad thing for us to note how much and how many people are losing it out every day. You are lost it. You're grieving and squelching. You're grieving by not becoming your body to be relaxed in the word of Lord God. You're squelching because you're not able to grow up into grammatious program in your body. And how many Christians are there today to fulfill Matthew 13, 52? To join as disciples and to grow up into grammatious. If you're not doing that, then take it for sure. 
You are squelching Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And that's what it becomes a pain for you to be waxed by the unclean spirits. If you have been free from the waxing of the unclean spirits, it meant to say, you're able to make up your body to be indwelled by the word of God accurately. That's what we look in Proverbs 16, 17, emphasizing the point. When you are walking in the terms and conditions of my Christ, you will be an upright man walking in the truth. When you're walking in the highway of the truth, you depart from wickedness or evil. And then you love to protect your soul. You're guarding your soul. Then you're going to be safeguard your paths, the way which you should walk, the minute detail of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which goes to guide you and lead you and make you to be with Him in Christ. The minute detail, even the minute detail, not to be trapped by Satan. Because they depart from iniquity. In 2 Timothy 2.19 when we read, that they have been named of Christ, they depart from iniquity because it has been said, as is holy, so you need to be holy in Christ. You want to still quelch, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, isn't it? You are squelching. The present Christendom is squelching, Lord God, the Holy Spirit to the highest. Therefore, the Holy Spirit of the Lord God is not happy to indwell in your body yet, but the promise given by God the Father to the Son he has been indwelled, but therefore he is not controlling you. Why? Because you are not in fellowship of him. How can you get back into fellowship of him? By using the privacy of your priesthood through confession of your sins through Reba on 1 John 1 9. That's how we're going to get back to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit controlling you. And when they've been controlled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you will make up the things pertaining to Christ as top priority. That's what you have been led. If you have been led and controlled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the number one thing to know that you have been there, been led by the Holy Spirit of the Lord God is to come to learn the word of Lord God first. That's what the Holy Spirit of the Lord of God does. He goes to control, he goes to lead, he goes to teach, he goes to mentor. He goes to make us the things pertaining to Christ, which are very, very essential for us. Because he knows you are the property of the Lord God, and he has sealed you until the day of redemption by the Holy Spirit, being purchased with a great price. Therefore, you don't have any part or any place for any manner of lusts to be operated in your flesh. Far less you go to grave or squelch, Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Being controlled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you will be maturing enough in the word of Lord God to do the will of Lord God. You know, very well, you don't go to grave, Lord God, the Holy Spirit at all. So, dear brother, how many days more you still want to stay back in the reigning power of your blood and be waxed rather than controlling the soul through the indwelling spirit of the Holy Spirit, teaching your human spirit and making to live a life worthy to Christ that you decided to your life. Because every day is precious. Every day we have been called to cry out because every day we have been reminded of John 17, 18. We have been sent into the world. And since we have been sent into the world for the work of Lord God in the great prayer, what he has prayed for us, our primary focus is to act under the power of the Holy Spirit rather than grieving or squelching as told in Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 3. And then he said in Matthew 23, verse 34, His scribes, his wise men, and his prophets he will send. Therefore he makes us in 2 Corinthians 5, 20, the ambassadors for Christ, the people who shall preach nothing but 
the truth. And then he finds in Ephesians 3, 7, an able minister, the bona fide gifted pastor, teacher, according to the gift, again the word over here called to be Doria, which we don't deserve. The gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his dunamis power. And the word effectual working is called to be energia, the superhuman power, the power of God in dealing with the things of Christ in this church age. And that superhuman power, dear brethren, is active. And it goes on to be the process of becoming, as Hebrews 4.12 goes on to teach, to employ in his business, which is able to build up against any pressure as a disciple-oriented believer to grow up into grammatias, so that in the labor service as a born slave to Christ in the viewpoint of the body, they come to do and to express their mouth to be opened up for the pale wonders of the Lord's mind. That's the working of energy power, the dunamis realm given for us by the spiritual gift of Christ as pastor teacher. That's a superhuman power. And that's not possible by anyone on this earth apart from the divine power of the Lord. Satan comes to make it up, duplicate. But we have Christ for us to tell the truth. Because Lord God is our witness for the teachings, what we preach. The revolution, what he has given for us to teach his mind. So dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short and the responsibility to lay down upon our shoulders is too large. So which way you want to go, you decide. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, lead us to the praise of his glory in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing means being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudible telling to Lord God the Father and the pious of your soul, let you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest merit is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, where you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the grace master Caruso, Thorn Logan, Herald the word in season and out of season because of our of witnesses where they have been called. The number one Dharmat Ruma witnesses in Willing Trinity for the Bible in our hands. The number two Dharmat Ruma witnesses or hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother and brother besides nature, the entire nearly coastal of witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the shapes may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, led us to the praise of his glory, in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, be grateful and thankful for this great privilege, O Lord, to understand your mind and explain it, to realize the Lamb of Lord God. And next, the relationship begins as a father-son, so that we can be faithful as your dear beloved son was. As you said, this is my dear beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Calling many sons unto your glory, O Lord, crowned with glory and honor, you have made us to be a suitable ministers to perform your work on this earth, only in the sphere of truth, being controlled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, rather than grieving or squelching. Help every minister, O Lord, to understand, to make up his body fit for Christ, in serving out as not just disciple, but to grow up into grammatias and learn the word of Lord God diligently from the depth of your scriptures, rather than making the Spirit of the Lord God to be grieved or squelched when we don't make our body to be sealed as a grammatious program developed in you to be that wise man being sent as prophetic word to be spoken so that as ambassadors for Christ we could be the representatives of you in the power of the Holy Spirit of the Lord God for which cause you have sent us into the world as you have sent your Son to make and to understand the effectual power working of Lord God the Holy Spirit in making thy will to be executed in this earth. So, Father, be grateful and thankful for this privilege. We pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten the challenge and to bless us by this message, which thou hast given for us in today's date of eternity past. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name, we pray, sovereign Lord. Amen.